the CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... is a love story, pure and simple. Well, perhaps not all that simple. I uh, realize I have a reputation to maintain, so I promise you it will contain at least one surprise. But it is a love story. And it reminds me of one of the greatest sonnets ever written. Elizabeth Barrett Browning's How Do I Love Thee? The end of which reads, And if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. Climb the north face of old Baldy. Why, Mike? Why? Like the fellow says. Because it's there. Dad, it's something I've always wanted to do. So why not? But not alone, Mike. Not alone. Supposing you slipped or missed a step or... Supposing I did, Dad. Would I be worse off than I am? drama Rendezvous with Death was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Christopher Tabori and Roberta Maxwell. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and ARM, Allergy Relief Medicine. I'll be back shortly with Act One. country that has always needed heroes. They are tailored, of course, to our changing customs, and we are a country of change. Daniel Boone, Lincoln, John Paul Jones, Lindbergh, Babe Ruth, Frank Sinatra, they're quite a grab bag, a reflection of America. Mike Thurston was one of the chosen. In a football-conscious era, he had done all the right things, picked the right college, the right team, became a sports glamour boy. He was blonde, tall, shaped like a wedge, and a quarterback. The other side of the coin was quite different. First of all, Mike Thurston was a very solid, likable, real Joe. And uh, second, uh, but that's the story. An interesting situation has been developed. The Big Ten Conference, as you all know by now, is settled. And Minnesota will be traveling to the Rose Bowl, unless, and here's the drama of today, unless Fresno State can pull off the upset of the year, led by the golden arm, Mike Thurston. He is a story tailored for headlines. An unsung hero from a small college, Mike Thurston is challenging mighty USC. Now, score 17-12 in favor of USC. There are 38 seconds left. And Fresno has the ball. Third down on USC's 23-yard line and seven yards to go. This is the key play. A touchdown is enough. The ball is snapped. Mike Thurston fading back for a pass as everyone expected. The blocking is good. He has time. He spots the man downfield. The pass is away. Perfectly thrown, leading the receiver. And the pass is good. The pass is good in the end zone. Fresno goes ahead 18 to 17 with only seconds left on the clock. The crowd is going mad. This is the finest moment of a young man's career. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute now. I, I don't understand this. Mike Thurston is down. Nobody broke through, but obviously he is hurt in some way. I can't tell you why right now. I knew it, Jack. I knew it. He never should have played. Now take it easy, darling. Why did you turn off the TV set? Maybe he's just hurt. Just hurt? Isn't that a great line for a parent to have to say? You know what I mean. Well, of course I know. We'd both be happy to hear he'd only broken a leg or a collarbone or, or something. Anything that could be fixed. So, so what? All right. All right now. Now, easy, darling. Just, just take it easy. I mean, the doctors gave him a clean bill of health. Well, they said they hoped they'd gotten all of it. But you never could tell. Well, let's try to think positively. I'm not going to believe the cancer is back. And I am going to turn that TV back on and find out what happened. Do what you want, Jack. It isn't going to change anything. The cancer is back inside our golden boy, and it's going to destroy him. 
before he even has a chance to really live. Hello, Dr. Baxter. Mrs. Thurston, Mr. Thurston. How's Mike? Can we see him? Yes, of course. He's fine. He's sitting up and eating like a horse. What happened to him, Doctor? Well, that's something we're going to have to talk about, but uh, not right now. Maybe right now is just when we should talk about it, Dr. Baxter. Well, I'm not sure that this is... It isn't is... anything new. It's something all of us have been living with. Well... Don't hesitate, Doctor. I'm as braced for it as my husband. All right. When Mike came in here four months ago, as you know, the problem seemed simple. He had some molds on his neck which we recommended should be removed as pre-cancerous growths. And you examined him? Mm Mm-hmm. And at that time, as you remember, we had to postulate that we were facing a possible melanoma. That terrible thing that spreads. Yes, Mrs. Thurston. Well, we're facing it now. And there's no way to stop it? Not that we know of. He's so young. It, it can't be. I mean, there must be some treatment, something that... I wish I could offer it to you. But he's only 21 and, and full of life. He's, he's a football player, an athlete. Now, there must be some way he can... I mean, there's something... Darling, this time, apparently there isn't. I mean, it's dirty, it's insidious, and there's no defense against it. If there is, for heaven's sake, tell us, Doctor. If I knew, I would. My son is going to die? He has a disease we can't defeat. How long has he got? Now, I can take it, Doctor. How long? At the outside, six months. Uh, John, come on down. No, no, it's, I'm, I'm all right, Jack. How about Mike, Doctor? Does he know? Well, he's a pre-med student. No way we could keep it from him. Yes, he knows. That he has six months or less? That's right. What happened this afternoon out there on the field? We don't know. He blacked out suddenly. The damn stuff is running wild through his body. He could turn up with any kind of symptom. It hasn't affected his brain. Oh, no, no, no. The boy's magnificent. There isn't anything I wouldn't do for him, including taking his place, if that were possible. I have never in my life known anyone who has more right to live. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I'm sorry. Forgive me. What a stupid thing to say. No, no, on the contrary. It was a lovely thing to say. The only thing is, it's wrong. Apparently, he doesn't have the right. Hello, Mom. Dad. Hello, Mike, darling. Hello, son. Did you come to spring me? Well, I don't know, Mike. That's really up to the doctor. No, sir. Strictly up to me. I want to get out of here. Oh, Mike, if Dr. Baxter thinks that The you... doc and me have kicked this around, Mom. Let's us not hack around. Hasn't he leveled with you? Yes, Mike, he has. So, no hearts and flowers. That's the way it is. I want to make the most of what I got left. Dad, you remember that summer I spent with Frank and Robert Herman in New Mexico in the Sangre de Cristo? Yes. I really dug that. My own horse, shoeing him, taking care of him. In the saddle, at least half of every day. And the mountains, all that. In some ways, it was the best time I've ever spent in my life. And I come on, you two. We can't freeze every time any of us think we've said the wrong word. Mom, Dad, please. Oh, yes, it's a raw deal. But crying isn't going to change it. Can we just forget what's going to happen? Try to make the best of what's left before it does. Dad was the greatest. Somehow he backtracked and dug up the Hermans whom he hadn't seen for years. The ranch they had sold years ago. But Dad bulldogged it and came up with the new owners. Who fortunately weren't planning to be there for the summer. The college year ended and I was still pretty good. Just dropping a lot of weight. I graduated and we took off for Truchas. A little town in New Mexico that was closest to our ranch house. You're sure it's okay, Paul? Oh, sure, of course. I mean, the damn place is pretty isolated, you know. It's 25 miles down Hairpin Mountain Roads to Santa Fe in the nearest hospital. Jack, forgive me, but what difference does it make? The hospital isn't going to help. 
except make it easier on you. Well, what about Mike? To make it easier on him. You did say there would be pain. No, no. I said there can be pain. I've already prescribed pills for Mike that'll help. Not all the way. Nothing works all the way at the end. And if it gets that bad? Well, then just call me. I'll fly in, do whatever I can to make it bearable. It's a hell of a thing, isn't it? He hasn't been in to see me for a couple of weeks. How's he feeling? I suppose that's the most heartbreaking thing of all. Except for all the weight he's lost, he's just bubbling with enthusiasm and what I'm tempted to call good health. Paul, do you suppose... Jack, Jack what, what can I tell you? The biopsies are the same. Nothing has changed. It'll go along from day to day, and suddenly out of the blue, it'll all be downhill. And we can only pray that once the turning point comes, it'll be fast. I'm sorry. I feel like an executioner. I think we all do. I wish to God I knew some way to fill up the last days to make some part of it all seem worthwhile. I think Mike himself is creating that possibility. Just go with him, let him squeeze everything he can out of the end of his life and find his own meanings. Just, just, just be sure he has enough pills to dull the agony if it comes. Why did I come back here? Away from all my friends and my contacts. Maybe that's the answer. I'm running scared. But am I? I don't want to die. Maybe the whole trouble is I just can't quite believe I'm going to. That I'll beat the odds somehow. But I have to be special. And then the pain comes. And I know no matter how much it hurts me, it just crumples mom and dad. So I try to get away where they won't see it. Oh, now, come on. Easy, boy, easy. Oh, come on. Suck in that belly. Oh, that's better, you old fake. I gotta get that saddle cinched home tight. You want me to fall off you on the trail? Mike! There you are. Oh, you got Blue all saddled up, huh? Where are you headed for? I'm gonna ride up to the snow line, Dad. And maybe have a go at the north face of old Baldy. Oh, all right, I'll come along with you. No, 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 Dad. I want to make this one on my own. Why can't I share it? I'll face it, Dad. It's too rugged for you. You're not in shape. You are? I think so. Sorry, I could cut my tongue out. Why, Mike, why? What does the fellow say? Because it's there. Dad, it's just something I want to do that I've never done. Maybe I'm trying to prove something. But I feel i got to do it. I'm not alone, Mike. I mean, suppose you slipped and missed a step, or... Supposing I did that, would I be any worse off? You didn't, Jack. You couldn't have let him go climb that mountain by himself. Joan, there really wasn't any way I could have stopped him. Well, at least you could have gone along. I wasn't prepared to, and he didn't want me. But that's a sheer rock face. It shouldn't be climbed alone. Joan, I... I suppose almost anything Mike does from here on in has to be on his own. Well, suppose he falls. We covered that eventuality, and you know what he said? What? Something that we can't argue with. Would he be any worse off if he did? Well, that's a terrible thing to say. I know. But it's a terrible situation that we all have to face. But as long as he's alive, there's always a chance. That isn't fair, Joan. We all know that there are no miracles. Well, but how can we be sure? And you know what Mike's like. He doesn't think of himself, only us. Now, it would be just like him to be quixotic enough to think that his death would be better if it was quick and such. It might be better for him, Joan. No, no, no. We've got to hold on to the last minute. Hope against hope. Oh, Jack, why did you let him go up that mountain? What's going to happen to him now? <laughs> depressing subject for a story, no question. There is little good to be said of death, except that it is certain and will come to all of us. But how and why and with what dignity and revelation is another question entirely. This story has only begun, and as I suggested in the beginning, its subject is not death, but love. I shall return shortly with Act Two.
approach to Old Baldy isn't difficult. Above the tree line, you are still only on the shoulders. And when the snow begins, there is one frozen esker which can be traversed on horseback across a deep valley. Once across that, to reach the last 1,500 feet of that 12,000-foot peak, if you circle it to the south, you can ride all the way to the summit. But if you decide to climb, it's a whole other story. But Mike made no attempt to climb it. What drove me up here today? What did I have in mind? I wanted to prove something, spit in somebody's face. Except that I realized I hadn't the strength. Oh. Oh, Lord. Oh, the pain. Oh, the pain is something else. I don't know how much more that I can take. Oh, it's gone now. But for how long? Oh, this is magnificent. I can see a hundred miles. I ought to be a god and immortal. Only I'm not. Three steps, my old buddy, and you look down a quarter of a mile. One more step, and you've bought a ticket to oblivion. Why not? The easy answer, and you protect mom and dad. A climbing accident, a slip. What a tragedy. Hey, 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 you down there. You out of your mind? What are you doing there? Hoping not to blow it. But I ran out of tea time. Don't move. Stay still. No way you can get from that ledge up over this sewback. Brilliant deduction, ma'am. That's why I was just waiting for you to come along. Extend a helping hand. Unless you have something else in mind. If I did, it's out of it. Oh, I'm so brilliant. Why didn't I bring some rope? Because you weren't planning to climb. Just maybe to do what? There's, there's, there's no time for small talk. I'm with you all the way. Look... I'm taking off my shirt, rip it up, and make a rope out of it. You tie off your climbing rope to it, and as soon as I haul up your rope, we'll walk you over the turtle back like you were a fly. So I can step into your parlor? (laughs) I'm not much of a spider. Even if you were, I'm a willing victim. Dishonor rather than death, I always say. Well, that's the best offer I've had all summer. Uh, Okay, you ready? Here. Where do you buy your shirt? I don't. I just figure birthdays and Christmas. I'll get a pair of supply. Sorry you blew this one. It looks expensive, and I bet you are cute in it. How do you like to stop being so brave and get sensible? Don't rock the boat, Sir Galahad. I'm not brave. I'm scared. Can you tie it off all right? It's not a hole. Pull away. Okay. Uh, Okay, I got it. Now... You got a sling around you? A sling around my shoulder and a sky of blue above. Sure, it's secure. As only a good bowling can make it. Hang tight. Okay, grab anything you can to help. Let's go. All right. And here she goes. Heave away. All right, just about home. Hi, Jelly. Slide. Just be sure you touch the plate. Oh. Ah. You're on him. <sighs> you all right? Solid, man. Solid. <laughs> Who are you, anyway? My name is Laura. As in, but she's only a dream. <laughs> Pretty hefty dream, wouldn't you say? Who are you? Mike Thurston. I came up here for the summer with my parents. Where? Oh, uh, we took the Herman's Ranch. What about you? Oh, uh, we live here, other side of the valley. The other half of my name is Willow. Our ranch is right on the other side of the valley. Oh, I can't see it. You're not supposed to. It looks down the other side of the ridge. Well, uh, I uh, guess I ought to thank you. For saving your life? No, I think nothing of it. Oh, I guess it's a standoff. Oh, what does that mean? In a kind of left-handed way, wouldn't you say I saved yours? That's a funny kind of thing to say. Forget it. Thanks for the lift. I guess it's time for me to split. No, no, wait, hold on. Uh, yeah, I'll walk you down the mountain. Uh, we don't follow the same trail. Well, maybe not up until now. But you don't think I'm going to let you get away that easy. You want to see me again? You know it. I'd like to see you again, but... Well, but what? Uh, 
Can we keep it just between me and you? Will you promise not to tell anyone else about me? <laughs> it's a wild trip, but if those are the ground rules, the only thing is... Well, maybe I don't have any right to see you again. That tears it. You better see me again. Where? Don't take the main trail. Coming up to Baldy, you'll see the Stroke Double Slash Trail that cuts off by the Blue Rock. Know where I mean? Yes, yes. You mean the rocking chair. The rock that sits on the two others like it would fall down any minute. That's it. Only it won't. Just follow the trail until you come out in the snow line. I'll be there. But, but how do I let you know when I'm coming? You won't have to. Uh, that's crazy. Oh, why can't you explain why? I have my reasons. If you want to see me again, try it my way. You'll see. It'll turn out all right. Okay. It's just... I've got to see you again. You will. Now, do me one more favor. You leave first. Just start down the trail and don't look back. What do you have to keep so secret? It won't be very long till you find out. But it's still too soon. So I took her at her word and I walked down the trail. Only I hadn't gone far before, like Lot's wife, I just had to look back. She was gone disappeared somewhere in those few seconds like she'd never been. Only you know what? I didn't turn to salt and I didn't panic. Somehow, some way, I knew I was going to see Laura again and I was right. Only first, I had to get on home. Mike, well, it's good to see you. You nearly drove us crazy being gone so long. Oh, I'm sorry, Dad. I didn't mean to. Where have you been? Uh, just up old Baldy. But you didn't climb the face. We've had the binoculars on it all day. You have? Sure. Scared all hell out of me saying you were going to try to scale it. I changed my mind. Obviously. But you had the binoculars on it. You, you didn't see anyone there. Well, no. Well, who? Uh, I, I, I don't know. It's, it was just an idle question. Well, it didn't sound so idle. Well, it was. Oh, hello, Mom. Oh, darling, how are you? It's, it's been a long day. But a good one. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. Just fine now that you're back. How are you feeling? Never better. I could eat a horse or a house or however you want to spell it. Oh, that's wonderful. What did you do today? I just moseyed about, bought some deep thoughts. Oh, that's nice. You know, your mother and I were kicking around a couple of ideas, Mike. We could go down to Las Vegas for the rodeo or maybe make a jaunt to Albuquerque. Mm, why don't you and Mom do either or both? Me? Uh, well, I think I'll just stick close to home. Well, Mike, we're trying to think of you. If this isn't the place for us to be, you just name it. No, Dad. I think this is just the place for me. How could I tell my parents anything about that magic summer? How could I even explain it to myself? I, who knew I had lost my life, asked nothing more than to continue it with the magic girl I met in the glow of the Blue Mountains. You're just going to have to learn to be a believer, Mike. I never thought I'd see you again. Why? Oh, I don't know. That day was so wild. I, I guess I thought I'd dreamed you. You don't believe in dreams come true? I, I don't know what I believe in anymore. Let's take us as we find us. What should we do today? I couldn't care less. As long as we do it together. Okay. Let's blaze a private trail from here to there. What do you mean? Got a hatchet? Sure, sure. Right right here in the saddle holster. Okay. We'll start here, cut across virgin forest, and blaze our own trail tree by tree to, to where? Wait a minute. Here, if I stand up in the stirrups, I can see a special little break in the trees halfway down the mountain. Let's cut it down to there, and that can be our special place. Yeah, our special place. You're on, Mike. Let's find our way home. Hello? Dr. Baxter? Yes? Oh, Paul, it's Jack Thurston. Oh, Jack. Well, well what is it, bad news? No, the very opposite, Paul. Mike is... Well, he's lost a little weight, but outside of that, I'm afraid to say it, Paul. Say what? I have never seen him in better health in my life. I mean, frankly, it scares me a little... That's why I'm calling you. Oh, I'm glad you did. You, you, you say there's no substantial weight loss? That's right. Well, how about pain? He never complains. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. No, but... 
I guess I can tell you something that does. Well, tell me. He isn't using the medication you gave him, Paul. He hasn't touched it. He doesn't seem to need it. I mean, something magic seems to have happened. Paul, do you think... Don't, don't ask me that, Jack. Not at long distance. I wouldn't dare to raise your hopes without... Without what? Well, Jack, look, it's a busy week for me, but I'll make time. Can I fly up there, spend the weekend, maybe? Sure, you could come into Santa Fe. I'll drive down and pick you up. Oh, wait a minute, i got a better idea. I'll rent a car in Santa Fe and drive myself up. Make it seem like, like, like an offhand kind of thing. I'll fly out tonight. I ought to be able to join you for lunch tomorrow. Expect me then. Uh, my love to Joan. Hey, Mike. Mike. Yeah? Ah. Ah, uh, Baxter, well, I'll be. What are you doing in this neck of the country? Oh, just passing by. <laughs> Thought I'd check in and see how the other half lives. Pretty good from the looks of you. <laughs> you could say that again. I couldn't feel better. Maybe I ought to chase you down to the nearest hospital, run a couple of tests on you. No, I might just go for that. Oh, only not right now. You, uh, headed somewhere? Well, yes. Uh, I-, I got something to do. But I'll be back right soon. Do Mom and Dad know you're coming? Mm-hmm. I called and said I might stop in for a night or two. Oh, that's great. You just go up on to the top of the hill and turn in by the corral. You can't miss it. I'll be back as soon as I can. There's no hurry. Who's the big, heavy date with? Oh, not anyone, really, really. It's just, well, it's just a special thing I have to do on my own. Got to get moving. See you later, Doc. These mountain roads are a little rough, Joan. Sorry I got here late. I, uh, I met Mike right down the mountain a bit. Doesn't he look fabulous? He does indeed. Oh. I, I, I've never seen him look happier. Or healthier. Paul, do you think that there's a chance that some miracle... No, I'm scared even to allow myself to think of it, but I do have to agree with Joan. Something's happened, something wonderful. Don't you agree? I, uh, wouldn't want to raise any false hopes. A physical thing we'll check out thoroughly. But one thing I do know. There's something lifting that boy's spirits halfway to the sky, and I I think I know what it is. He's in love. In love? With whom? <laughs> a girl, I'd expect. Paul, there isn't a girl his age within 15 miles of here. The only other hill on Grass Mountain is Art Chalice's hut up the slope, and he's not there. No one is, except for an abandoned house I looked at on the other side of the valley when we were planning to come up here, and that's in no condition for anyone to live in. And, and yet, you know now that Paul mentions it, I think he's right. He's never mentioned anyone to you? No. When I go on down for the mail today, I'll have to ask the skipper at the country store if he knows about anyone. Something awfully strange going on here that I think we'd better look into. strange girl when you think of it, isn't she? Laura Willow. And it's been a strange relationship between a boy who knows he has no future and a girl who seems to live only for the present. I wonder what this strange will-o'-the-wisps past. of spruce that sprawls over the Sangre de Cristo Mountains is thousands of years old. It is a tangle of fallen trees and undergrowth too thick for passage, except where state trails have been cut, cleared, and maintained. There are some private trails, such as the one that Laura and Mike have cut for themselves, and which ends in the lush, grassy glade they have made their own. At the moment, they are lying on their backs, side by side, gazing up at a clear blue sky. Sure you don't want some of this chow I lugged along? Ah, uh, no. Drink? Coffee? Cola? Water? No sale. <laughs> You're a funny one. Don't you ever eat? I have eaten in my day, boy. I've never seen you. Maybe I have bad table manners. Well, you couldn't do anything ugly if you tried. I hope not. Hey, come on down. What do you live on, really? 
cloud nine. <laughs> You're far out. You know it. But not out of sight. I wish you could never be out of my sight. I'm not going anywhere. But I am. Mike, maybe it's time for us to... No, no, no. No, not yet. I, I can't. Let's just keep it the way it is. Something private, just for us. Nobody else a part of it. And we're a part of nothing else but just this. You and me. And just being together. That's what I want to talk to you about. No, 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 no. Let's, let's change the subject. This place, uh, you know, we ought to give it a name. How about mm, uh, the secret mesa? It isn't really a mesa, is it? Okay. Laura's Lee. <laughs> How does that grab you? I hope you don't think of me as a siren. Mm, you weave a lot of magic, woman. I couldn't have passed you by. You're kind of a wizard yourself, ma'am. Oh, why didn't I... Why didn't I meet you back in high school? Why couldn't I have been there for you to meet? The timing's all out of whack. Too late for me. Too early for me. I'm sorry for what might have been. Don't. It's going to be... No, please. Please, Mike. I want you to kiss me now. No, no. Lord, no, Laura, I can't. I... Kiss me. Laura... I love you, Mike. And I love you, Laura. God help us both. He will. Where are you going? Out of your life. As far and as fast as I can. Why? Because this is where it ends, Laura. I should, should never have let it go this far. You see, and then, uh, don't ask me to explain. But there isn't any future in it. I can't go to meet your parents. I can't even take you back to meet mine. I had no right to get you involved. The best thing I can do is cut out. That's a nice, brave little speech, Mike. You know it? Now, go ahead. Let me have both barrels. Work me all over if you want. No. All I want to do is to decide some things. Right now. No, no. Don't, don't ask me to explain. Let's not drag it out. Let's just grit our teeth and go our separate ways. But we aren't going separately, Mike. We're going together. We're always going to be together. Oh, no, Laura, you don't understand. But of course I understand. You're going to die. You know? Of course. I always have. Since the very beginning. But how? Oh, you, you must have seen something in the paper. Oh! W what is it, Mike? The pain? I... Uh, yeah. Yes, it is. Just, just give me a moment. Oh, where is it, darling? Show me. Here. Some, some pills in my pocket. Oh, oh you, you don't need any pills. Just let me put my oh. hand there. there. There won't oh. be any more pain now. Ever. Oh. Oh, you don't know. It's gone. Just like that. Who... Who are you, Laura? Laura. Since I know all about you, I think it's time you found out all about me. Come with me to the other end of our green valley, and I'll show you where very soon you'll find our own journey's end. It's so beautiful and so hard to believe, Laura. It won't be, darling, when we come into our own... So this is where you grew up and spent all those 20 years of my never knowing you. <laughs> I was a skinny little girl with sort of buck teeth. You wouldn't have liked me then. Oh, no, I'd have loved you no matter when I met you. Oh, no. I was shy. Scared of my own shadow, that's why. No, no, no. That's all past and done with. Poor darling. So long, so long. I would have waited a hundred years just knowing you would come. I'm sorry it took so long. You had to have time to grow up to me, my darling. So we could have our own eternity together. I've got to go now. I've, I've got to see Mom and Dad. Will you tell them about us? How can I? How could I make them understand? I think there will be a way. We'll see. Just hurry back to me soon. I'll be waiting. Goodbye, Laura. No. No, not goodbye. Never goodbye. Just... Till we meet again. I'll count the minutes. Mike? Yes? You will come back. I'm afraid to be alone again. Oh, I'll come back. 
Nothing will keep me away. I'll make sure of that. If I have to, I promise I'll come for you. Doc, for heaven's sake, come with me. Help me. Hmm? Well, what is it, Jack? It's Mike. Over this way. When I drove up, he was just sitting on his horse, hanging onto the pommel and swaying. I just got out of the car in time to catch him as he fell. Around the corner of the barn. Was he in pain? No. He was more like a man in a, in a dream. Oh, good Lord. Look at him. Is he dead? Quiet, quiet, quiet a moment. No. His heart's still beating. He's feverish. Uh, I don't like the look of that. What? He's in coma. Come on, Jack. Right. Let's get him into the house before his mother sees him like this. I suppose this is the beginning of the end, Jack. I don't know, darling. What the devil is taking Paul so long? Well, perhaps I should go. Maybe I can help. No, no, no. Let Paul handle it. But I want to be doing something. I can't just sit here, and I'm scared my boy will slip away. Doc, how is he? He's, uh, he's out of coma, and... I have him stabilized, I think. Oh? I had to give him a sedative. He got, well, sort of delirious. Oh, no. He kept calling about some girl, a Laura Willow. Do you know her? Good Lord. What, what is it, Jack? Nothing. Nothing. Don't Jack. lie to me, please. Whatever it is, I want to know about it. Well, did he say anything else about this girl, Paul? Well, it was... Disjointed, of course, just just mumbling to himself. But apparently my guess about him was right. He's been seeing a good deal of this Laura Willow over the summer. The reason I had to knock him out was because he insisted on getting out of bed to go to her. Said she was waiting for him. Well, he's obviously madly in love with her. In love? See her all summer? And he never told us why, Jack. Well, he may have been... I don't know, under the circumstances, he... Since he couldn't have told the girl the truth about himself. You know, what am I saying? If it was... If that was the girl, he couldn't have told her anything. How do you mean? Because... If you'd rather be alone together... No, I... no, Paul, it isn't that. It's just that... Look, I didn't pay much attention at the time. Skipper likes his little jokes. I thought he was pulling my leg. Jack, I wish you would come right out with it. Well, it was because of Paul's conclusion that... Mike hadn't been off on these jaunts at his alone... When I got to the store, I asked Skipper if there was any young woman about, you know, any girls about Mike's age. Well, why did you ask, Mr. Thurston? Well, it was something I, uh, something I had on my mind. My son, Skipper, I, I got a sort of notion that maybe he was squiring some local bell. <laughs> Don't know who it would be unless he wanted to cross the divide all the way down to Pickett's Lodge where they got some dude ladies. It's pretty far. Now you're on to 25 miles. Oh, I but... doubt if it's anyone from there. So I, I don't suppose there could be anyone. Only house outside of where we're staying is right here at Skipper's Corners, and Art's empty one up the hill, right? It's about the size of it. Well, certainly nobody could be living in that old abandoned place across the valley from us. That old Willow place? Mm. Oh, oh, Lord, no. Place has been abandoned near 20 years ever since Judd killed himself after his daughter died. <laughs> Unless, of course, your son is gone and took up with a ghost. What do you mean? Well, you know how folks talk. They say moonlight nights, in particular during the summer, folk meet up with Laura Willow picking columbines up beyond the snow line to put on her own grave, some say. Eh, she was a mighty pretty little thing, for she smashed herself all up, falling off the... North face of old Borgie there. An accident? Well, that's what some said. Other things have been said, too. Folks whisper and all. Her mother had been dead a good while. Judd and she were alone. He was a man with a lot of juices. Some said he wouldn't leave her alone, so she stepped off that high place. A decent girl and all, and a kind of a shy one. Judd just killed herself in remorse. Hey, you know how people talk. But uh, they do say she still wanders. Maybe, maybe your son met up with her. Is it? No. No, 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 I don't. What did you say the girl's name was again? As pretty as a picture she was. A shame to die so young. Her, her name, name was Laura Willow. 
The same name as Paul Hurd might say. Was that the name? Yes, Joan. No mistake. He kept saying it. And she's been dead how long? Twenty years. Well, how could Mike... Jack, what does it mean? What does it all mean? I don't know, darling. Maybe Mike heard the story from someone and it's stuck in his mind. Maybe he's awake and we can ask him now. Is it all right for me to look in, Paul? Of course. Of course. <gasps> John. John, what is it? It's Mike. It's Mike. He's gone. He's gone. He couldn't have died. No, I'm not talking about death. I mean, his... His body. Him. Our son. He's gone. The body of Mike Thurston was never found. It was reasoned that in a delirium, he'd climbed out the window and wandered off into the forest to die. The virgin forest could bury a hundred lost men without them ever being found. For myself, I like to think that Laura came to him, as she had promised, and brought him back to journey's end. As I said in the beginning, for me, this is a love story. I shall return shortly. course of the search for Mike Thurston, his mother and father visited the remains of the Willow Home. There was a path from the back of the house up the hill to an aspen grove where they found a simple grave with a headstone that read, Laura Willow, 1937-1957, she died too soon. I like to think some gentle god gave her 20 years of grace without growing older, and that she does not sleep alone for that eternal life to come. Our cast included Christopher Tabori, Roberta Maxwell, Mandel Kramer, Arnold Moss, and Anne Petoniak. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>